Red light means it's on. And when I hit this little button at the end of class, sometimes it turns it off. Last period it didn't, so we had all kinds of like interactivity and so forth. Which will apparently appear on YouTube. Um, yeah, and the lessons are there, and the three at home are being able to watch those. Okay, quick question. Do you guys want to have a moment of silence? Okay, okay let's have a moment of silence. For like, how long? You're like, all period, no. <laughs> all right, we'll go 30 seconds. We've already started. I forgot to look at the, the second counter and so forth. I think that's about 30 seconds. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention, please? All quiet, please. Thank you. Um, sounds weird saying all quiet because you're already quiet. It's like, what the heck? What is this? Your shtick, Mr. Hansen? You say the thing every time. And uh, yeah, I do. So, yeah. I mean, I actually said that on my videos. Those of you guys who watched my videos last quarter would see that I also said that then. You're like, that's really weird because you're at home in your room, maybe your cat's next door or on your lap or something like that. I mean, give me a break. But yeah, that's what we do. So have your notes out, and we're going to continue on looking at, uh, we're going to wrap up with the Indo-Pakistan Wars, okay, and then we're going to turn our attention to Algeria's War of Independence. I did make a little bit of a change just because uh, as I was looking through all the various different components having to do with um, um, what we're covering uh, to wrap up with the uh, Indo-Pakistan Wars and the Algerian War and so forth. We're not going to wrap that up in time for next class. So I changed it. It's right up here on the board. I changed it to the quiz, 10 points. I mean, it's, a, it's almost like, it's like review your notes and just you know, know that limited amount of material. And that'll be on Thursday. Okay. Now, some of you guys are like, well, that's the same day I'm supposed to turn in my revised IA. I generally try not to have the same things hitting on the same time, but, I mean, good grief, that's like the revised IA. I put people on notice of that, and some of you guys don't need to make much revision, to be honest, for your first draft. Uh, people have been on notice of that since, like, last May, and certainly since the beginning, okay? And you've got, what, six, door, six more days to do that. So I don't think that's too much of a burden in this particular situation to have them both coming on the same time. The quiz will go by very quickly. I'll collect physically your, um, uh, your papers, your revised IAs, and then we'll get started on the next unit if we haven't actually gotten started on it before. Question? Oh yeah, we will in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the next unit, Cold War Part 2 of 3, is going to be a big long test. Okay. The only reason that that um, and the last last one I did with essays with you guys, like on the first part of the Cold War, because I wasn't going to give you a test, not an essay test um, under the circumstances. So this is just sort of leftover remainder things, at the beginning of this year. Just the Indo-Pakistan Wars and what I'm about to teach you today and next time on the Algerian Wars. Okay? I've also already posted in um, Google Classroom a link to, um, it's about 20, 25 minute uh, documentary. It was done by, I want to say like the CIA, but it's actually, it's like, whoa, you know, it's, it's actually pretty informative of and includes documentary stuff and um, various different things 
um, having to do with the War of Algeria. Okay, so you'll see like Charles de Gaulle and some of the other key participants in the Algerian War of Independence. Okay, all right. So be sure to watch that as well. It'll take 20, 25 minutes, and so forth. Um, yeah, questions. I think I did a pretty good job, uh, hopefully, with remedial training as far as like some of the things that I'm looking for with the IA. Didn't actually get to it in my other class, the green one. I'm going to have to do that um, with those guys when I see them on Monday. Um, next week, I see you guys, what, just twice? Yeah, so when you come in on Tuesday, we'll be, I'm sure we'll be wrapping up the Algerian War. If need to, we'll get started on the next thing. And um, yeah, and then we'll have the quiz on Thursday. I'll take your papers on Thursday. Questions? Everything good? Yes, sorry, Mary. I feel really bad about how that kind of played out. It's okay? Is it okay? Okay. Yeah. The one chair that I got rid of, there was this one chair, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, I'm like, I'm getting rid of that chair. I got rid of the squeaky table, I mean, that was no problem, because that was like annoying. But there was this one chair that my ninth graders like to like hike it up really, really high, uh, hike it up really, really high, and then like move around. I'm like, that is like liability, I'm like, that chair is going. And I put it in like a different part of the building, it came and made its way back, I'm like, no, I'm getting rid of that. If you guys, you know, here's the deal. If you guys want to come up with a plan, I don't have a problem with somebody in there. I just don't want to be, favor be playing favorites. If you guys want to come up with some kind of a plan for, like, rotation, Mary's like, I'm done with this. I don't, I think the kids just stay over there. I, oh, there we go. That's like, that's like I had a student who graduated in my very first year, uh, or the, among the first graduation class. And um, she had something of value. I may have told this story before. She had something of value. I think it was like a cookie or something. I mean, it was a really nice cookie, and it was right there, and she wasn't eating it. And clearly, she wasn't going to eat it. She was just sort of, it was right there. And one of the boys in class thought that, hey, she's not going to eat it. She's not going to, like, enjoy it. I'm going to come over, and he took it from her without asking. I mean, you're shaking head. Yeah. I mean, it's like, that is an offense. And she was like, mm-hmm. That ain't going to happen. She went over. She retrieved the cookie. And he's like, well, you weren't even eating it. You didn't want to eat it. And she goes, yeah, you didn't ask for it because you didn't ask for it. And you took it without permission. She went over to the trash can, and she crumbled the cookie, its remnants, crumbs, and everything going into the trash can. She was like, if I don't want it, and you try and take it without permission and my you know, offering and so forth, you're not going to get it. So, yeah, I was like, whoa. So, I don't know. How many of you guys are like, mm-hmm, that was good? How many of you guys are like, no, she should have let him have the cookie because she wasn't eating it. And <laughs> it's like, here, put it in a box, mail it to people who really need the food in some other part of the world. Okay? You need to ask. There are certain rules and things that people abide by. And I really do. If you, I, honestly, if you guys come up with some, Mary's like, enough, let's move on. If you come up with some system, I don't mind with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. What? No, that's like somebody walking by like with a collection plate and somebody looking going, I could use that. <laughs> oh, you would take them. Oh, I understand now. I thought you were saying I would take them and use them and keep them. Yeah, but you could actually deliver them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so here's the deal. We've got the Indo-Pakistan Wars. Let's get right to it. The Indo-Pakistan Wars. Um, which are very, very destructive uh, between those two countries and have created a lot of resentment and reflect a lot of resentment. We've got a lot of the details there. Okay? Who won, Jack, who won the first Indo-Pakistan War from 1947 to 1949? Trick question, potentially. Yeah, there was a ceasefire. Who won? You can say nobody. Kind of nobody. What percentage of the land did India retain control of? It's very good. 60% and then 40%. So there was residual 
problems, okay? The war of 65, did we talk about the war of 65? I don't think we got into the details of that so much. Okay, the war in 1965, okay? The war in 1965 is fought primarily in Kashmir. Mm, surprise there, the disputed territory of Kashmir, where there had been a ceasefire. The 65 war was actually fairly limited. Let me see if I can give you the exact information. Okay, between the months of April and September 1965. Um, a lot of tanks involved in that, in that particular war between the, um, not so much the whole communal violence thing that we saw in, in the first um, Indo-Pakistan War, 47, 49, but you've got mostly the two main armies involved with each other there in Kashmir predominantly. Um, thankfully, the, the, the casualties were much less. Here's your death toll on both sides. You ready? I mean, we're talking about millions, hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands. Total India death toll, 3,000, give or take. Total Pakistan death toll, 3,800. Okay, so not so much there. India and Pakistan, yeah, still the same two countries. Uh, 3,800, so 3,800, okay? Um, it's interesting that it occurred between April and September. Um, and it actually, part of the reason it sort of stopped late in September as you start going into the latter months of the year is that Kashmir, a lot of parts of Kashmir, let's go back and look at the map here. A lot of parts of Kashmir are very high, high mountainous regions. And literally they're like depopulated during the winter months. So it's kind of strange because what happens as spring comes in, you see Pakistanis, um, Indians rushing up the mountain to lay claim to the territory that they say is theirs. And then potentially you could get a war. 65 was an example of a war. And it was started by Pakistan, indecisive in the sense that Pakistan didn't gain any more territory really from it, nor did India really gain any more territory from it. So you still have the same old, same old at the end of 65. So we see kind of like a nice pattern where things are becoming less dangerous between those two countries. Is that the way it's going to be in 1971? Six years later? No. 1971 is going to see a serious fight between Pakistan and India. Okay? Let me see. I'm going to go to this map right here. Okay? This is the way things were at the beginning of 1971. You had India, right, the large nation there, and then Pakistan included west and east, those two regions. I mentioned to you before that the eastern part of Pakistan, it's got a lot of population, not the majority of the population of Pakistan. Its economy is not so good. And they felt as though, well, many of the people there felt as though West Pakistan people uh, was dominating. And so they started calling out for independence. Basically, the war in 1971 between India and Pakistan had to do with the independence effort of what would become Bangladesh. Okay? East Pakistan wants to leave Pakistan and call itself Bangladesh. So that's what they do. March 26, 1971, East Pakistan declares itself as independent Bangladesh with the support of India. 1971, March 26, with the support of India, okay? The fighting breaks out by the end of that year as West, the western part of Pakistan decides, no, we're not going to let this happen. Well, that's problematic. The western part has some loyal troops in that region, but now they're fighting, you know, in a sense, a you know, an insurrection in that region. And India is not helping them at all. India is not allowing for the transference of troops and supplies across their territory over to East Pakistan. If anything, India is helping the Bangladeshis, the East Pakistanis, in their independence effort. You see how that is? I mean, it's kind of like an analogy. British-speaking uh, colonials uh, in the French and Indian War fought for the French against the French. Against the French. But what about the French in the American War of Independence? Which side did they take? They took our side. So now we've got India helping out East Pakistan. Yes, Jack? 
was basically as though they were feeling as like second class citizens. They didn't feel like they had good representation um, in the Pakistan government. It was dominated by the folks that were living in West Pakistan. Does that kind of make sense? So they're like, hey, we might as well be our own separate country. And we got India to support us. Okay? That one, um, in one sense, you can go like, well, the fighting was very brief. Um, it occurred over the space predominantly of about 13 days. And yet, the fighting in the long course of bef before the official work, Pakistan invaded India. It was a preemptive attack. Okay? They're like, obviously you're not helping us here, so we're going to invade you, and we're going to put down this independence movement over there in what became Bangladesh. Um, you would think within a relatively short period of time that that's not going to be a problem as far as like casualties, but write this down. We got two to three million civilians killed in the fighting that takes place. So you're back to sort of like a communal war. And in this case, you get a lot of Muslim on Muslim fighting because the Pakistani those that are loyal to the Pakistani government are fighting against those that want Bangladeshi independence. And you get a whole bunch of refugees, between 8 to 10 million refugees trying to flee from the fighting, heading in various different directions away from the fighting. I mean, that's where refugees go. Okay? Ultimately, who won? Well, the map kind of tells you who won. Who won? East, yeah. Bangladesh became a separate country. If you were to look over here on my wall, can't really see the names anymore and so forth, but here is the Pakistan flag with the crescent. What the heck is, why do we see crescent moons in so many flags? What is that usually an indication of? Islamic country, yeah. There's the Indian flag, and then there's the red on, red circle on green background, that's the Bangladesh flag, okay? So, at the end of the war, India wins, Bangladesh wins, Pakistan loses. Okay? And is that it? Do they decide that they're going to be peaceful with each other from this point on, India and Pakistan? No. Tensions remain. Next key incidents. India develops nuclear weapons by 1974. Okay? So, they're looking at developing nuclear weapons. They do. So, they can sort of say, hey, Pakistan, if you're going to get into another fight with us, you know, we've got the potential of going nuke. Whereas Pakistan is going to try and do what? Get nuclear weapons too. And they ultimately do by 1998. 1998. Pakistan and India will both have nuclear weapons capability. And they don't need the big, huge intercontinental ballistic missile technology in order to hit the other side. Short range and medium range missiles will do quite well if you're trying to hold the other country at bay. And so you can look and see by the uh, map here, both of them fall well within the range of the missiles that they had developed as part of their arsenal. Okay? They don't need to launch over any oceans or anything like that. So, will they go to war again? Interesting question. Has the tension uh, over Kashmir resolved itself? Not really. Okay? And there will be some additional fights, right? It's kind of like we got the official wars on the dates that are listed in your handout, but there are some other tensions. For example, in 1999, there was tension and killing and fighting in Kashmir. Not a full-blown war, but sometimes it's sort of like a militia group of uh, Muslims living in the Indian region, Indian-controlled part of Ka uh, Kashmir, fighting against the Indian army. That occurred as well in the years uh, 2001 and 2002. It's almost like if you're in the Indian military and you're stationed in Kashmir, you know what springtime's going to bring. The snow will melt and the militia, the Muslim militias will move in. Now here's an interesting thing because if you're the Pakistanis and you're wondering, do we really want to get drawn into a big war with India over this tension in Kashmir? More and more they're like, eh, that would really be problematic. It's like, it's, think about this. You're a parent someday. You got a kid. Do you want your kid to go around and tell every other kid at school, 
Um, my dad or mom can whoop your dad or mom. Do you want them to say that? Really? You don't want them to say that? You don't want them to be an agent for you to enter into, like, conflict with some other uh, parent? <laughs> I mean, it's like, so do you want, does, does Pakistan want the Kashmir m militants to draw them into another big conflict? You know, because potentially it could be very, very deadly and dangerous. I mean, here's just one side note here. And make sure you put this in your notes. Where does this fit in the Cold War? Is this a Cold War conflict? It occurs during the Cold War, but is there clear involvement directly by the United States of the Soviet Union in the war? Not so much. It's weird because, write this down, India has better relations, certainly in those early years, with the Soviet Union. Which doesn't look right because India is a big democracy. But India had some tension, before they became independent, with their imperial masters, the British. And so some of that carried over into the early years of their independence. Where they're like, man, we're kind of tired of the British. And if the British are on the side of the Americans in the Cold War, well then, let's have positive relations with the Soviets. Now, what about Pakistan? If the Soviets are going to be sort of like all cozy cozy with India, and generally India tried to be like non-aligned, like not take sides, that was their general position. But they could get some weapons and so forth from the Soviets. But it wasn't like the Soviets had the Red Army there and they were bossing them around like they could in Eastern Europe. So Pakistan, who are they going to try and cozy up with and become more positive and friendly with? You think they're going to try and do that with the United States? Will the United States develop positive relations with Pakistan? Yes, they will. It's a very important point, as we'll see as we go forward with this. And sometimes Pakistan is not going to have as much democracy as, say, India. Sometimes they'll have a military dictatorship at times. But the relationship is very strong. And that's going to be important when we get to some conflicts, say, just to the uh, northwest of Pakistan in Afghanistan. And the United States is looking for, like, an entry point into Afghanistan. In fact, that relationship is so positive. Here, tied into 9-11. Can you name one person, really bad, uh, that spent a lot of time in Afghanistan and ultimately ended his days in Pakistan? And we were looking for him? Exactly. Thank you very much. Osama bin Laden. What is Osama bin Laden's great crime that occurred 19 years ago today? Yeah, the Twin Towers and also the Pentagon, right? And also, like, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, because that plane was probably going to be heading toward the Capitol building or the White House. But thanks to the passengers who intervened, it ended up crashing into the ground in Pennsylvania. Osama bin Laden... We were hunting for Osama bin Laden. We overthrew, temporarily it looks like, the Taliban in, in Afghanistan. They're on the resurgence. But Osama bin Laden was hiding out. And ultimately, he was, it turns out he was hiding out in Pakistan, which is a friendly country to us. But he had established positive relations with some of the people and government entities within Pakistan. So that's problematic. Interesting question. Daniel, if you're the President of the United States of America, you're Osama bin Laden, or excuse me, <laughs> oops. You're going after Osama bin Laden, you're Barack Obama, and you're like, we're going to get that guy. And he, intelligence to show, he's in Pakistan. Do you alert Pakistan and get permission to take a military uh, effort into Pakistani airspace? Why not? Yeah, there's some people within the Pakistani government, we were afraid that if we told the Pakistani government, the word would make its way through. Osama bin Laden would, would hear about it, and then where would he be when our SEAL team shows up? He'd be gone. So did we tell Pakistan? Did that work out for the, uh, for the goals and objectives of that mission? Yeah. They killed him. They took his body. They dumped it in the Indian Ocean. There you go. Interesting relationships that we have with countries. And then afterwards, we're like, sorry, Pakistan. You understand, don't you? You know? So things are very interesting and complicated. All right, to give you a, 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 to kind of wrap this up, I want you to know that India and Pakistan actually 
more and more they're on the same page. And we get a real sense of that because of what occurred in 2008. Okay? There was a terrorist attack. It was a really bad terrorist attack in 2008. Um, 164 people were killed. 308 people were wounded. It occurred in Mumbai, India, which is just along the coast here in the uh, Indian Ocean. It's a large city. It used to be called Bombay. And what happened was there were some terrorists. These are Muslim extremists who were from Kashmir. They were getting kind of frustrated that the Pakistani government maybe wasn't like, you know, advocating as strongly as maybe they had in the past for Kashmir to be entirely or more so Muslim. So they took matters into their own hands. They staged a terror attack on November 26, 2008. There were 10 Pakistani militants with a lot of experience in fighting in Kashmir. And they decided to do a terror attack against like hotels and public transportation facilities. They went after this one hotel that was frequented by a lot of like outsiders and so forth. So they went in there. I mean, ultimately, I think all but one of them ended up dead. There were 12 targets of this violence. Interesting question. Pakistan was not OK with that. They didn't authorize it. It was not part of the Pakistani government. And they basically came along afterwards and said, that's like not OK. Obviously, India was looking around going, is this an assault against us that we need to attack Pakistan? India's response? No. OK? Do you understand that? Yes. India. Yes, Mumbai is in India. Dubai is in the United Arab Emirates, the Persian Gulf. Any others? <laughs> That's like, I knew that one. Yeah, it's like. Um, so curiously enough, things are better. I mean, both countries have like a great affinity from the time that they were part of the British Empire for the sport of cricket. Yeah, I mean, they, and, and, they, and they can actually have like cricket matches between the excellent teams from Pakistan and India and do, 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 very, very competitive in other parts of the world that were not part of the British Empire, like cricket, whatever, you know. So things are better, although I will give you an update. I did see recently that there was some fighting on some disported, disputed border regions uh, between Indian troops and not Pakistani troops, but Chinese troops. They literally like, involved like rocks being thrown down upon troops of the other side. I think it was the Chinese that were throwing them down on the Indians, and that created some concerns. If you look at the map here, there's some areas where India and China, I mean, high up mountainous areas where there's a bit of a border dispute, and you're like, why? <laughs> Who cares? It's a mountainous area. It's not like people are living there. Kashmir is interesting because, yeah, India has claims on it, Pakistan has claims on it, and China has claims on parts. Pakistan's given up on some of the claims for some of that territory that, that China occupies, but India and China still have a dispute. And it's gotten violent there within the last couple of months. The Indians blame the Chinese at stirring up the violence. But anyway, just as sort of a tie-in to what things are. OK? Algeria. Questions on India, Pakistan? I think we got all the details there. All right, Algeria. Algerian War of Independence occurred in the years after World War II. Occurred as part of this whole theme of European powers that held control of Asian and African territories predominantly, ultimately being under some pressure to leave. This is a theme that we will see quite a bit of. Okay? The British were put under pressure to leave India. They did. The French are going to be under some pressure to leave various parts of Africa, including Algeria. Some parts of Africa, by the early 60s, they will, France will leave. Britain will leave. They're like, okay, fine, whatever, independence. That's what America seems to be for, and 
Her days as an empire are done, but Algeria was problematic. And I want to go into the details of how the Algerian War for Independence between 1954 and 1962 was very problematic, very contentious, very bloody. And it has partly to do with the fact that for the French, Algeria is just across the water. And for many of the French, they had moved in there. Let me throw this out to you guys. Hawaii. What if Hawaii wants independence? Or what if a significant portion of the population of Hawaii wanted independence? If you go back last year and look at your notes and so forth, did the Hawaiians consent to having <laughs> the United States take control? No, there are a fair number of Hawaiian natives who were not that interested in America coming and taking control. Interesting question. How many of you guys would be like, yeah, put it to a vote, majority rules, and Hawaii can leave? How many of you guys would be okay with that? Okay, we got one, two, three, four. Oh, actually, so you're like, oh, cool. We don't need no naval bases in Hawaii. I don't know, maybe we can. I don't mean there's other significant factors and so forth. But if you just look at that, but here's an interesting question. What is the percentage of the population in Hawaii that is non-Hawaiian? Now, granted, there is mixed due to marriage and so forth and things like that. Like, what are the biggest components of the, Hawaiian po of the population in Hawaii as far as heritage? There's a lot of Hawaiian heritage. There's a lot of Asian heritage, particularly Japanese. And then you've got, you know, European, African-based population as well. How many of you guys be like, no, you can't leave? Interesting. This will be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah. Perhaps among young people are like, hey, if they want to go. That was the question in France. You ready? Write this down. About 10% of the population in Algeria was French. Now, is 10% enough for France to say, mm, we're going to keep it? And of course, the question is asked at various different points in time. Because if the answer is from the French government is, we're going to keep it, and the vast majority of the, of the Algerian non-French people say, no, we're going to fight for it, and we're going to keep this fight going, eventually then maybe some French might say, all right, fine, we're going to leave. By the way, write that down. When it's all said and done, the French government says, fine, we're going to leave. And since France is a democracy, they put it to a vote. And what does the vast majority of the French people by 1962 say, yeah, we're going to leave. That's not necessarily how it started out.